probably don't recognize me this evening. I've spent $150,000 on my outfit. That's right, everyone. I am Liza Minnelli. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> you wish, B. Arch. You wish. again Dave's just finished wasn't he good tonight ah Dave you know some, especially as it was uh, it was a rerun tonight and it's it's does it me or when you watch Dave in a rerun you think he's better the second time around <laughs> I miss the nuances that go in you know when Paul puts the music in sometimes I don't notice the nuances that he puts in I always wanted to have a puppet. <laughs> I would call him Mr. <laughs> Mr. Surprise. Uh, well, I don't know. Anyway, well, look, it's the, you know, you know that bit where I, I come on the show and I tell you, this is the bit after Dave, where I come on and I tell you who's on the show and then hope that you'll wake up. <laughs> I think it's your husband. <laughs> but it's an awesome show tonight. You should wake up. Chris Matthews is here, and Christopher Lynch Cross is here. Come on! We'll be right back with the show. This is not a political rally. Everybody sit down. Relax. There'll be, there'll be none of that screaming and hysteria here. If there's going to be any hysterical screaming, I'll be doing it. For I am originally European. It's a great day for America, everybody. Why? Um, Oh, I'll tell you why, because the Pentagon, where do you get that? They've commissioned a, a portrait, uh, they're buying a portrait of Donald Rumsfeld for $46,000. <laughs> anyway, it'll probably cost ten times that, serve no real purpose, and it'll never be finished. Remind you of anything? <laughs> It wasn't such a great day for John McCain. He got some support today, but I don't think he would want to be, you know, getting support from... He got... Al-Qaeda picked him as their choice. Or... I'm not kidding, look at the headline. Al-Qaeda, we support McCain. <laughs> Which I gotta say, what? I mean, if I was gonna... No! Absolutely, yes! I know. Now, apparently Al-Qaeda made this announcement on their website. Which begs the question, Al-Qaeda is a website? <laughs> Can we use this to find them? <laughs> they have a website! <laughs> look, just, you know, send them an email, say, look, we've got a couple of old Macarena albums. <laughs> Send us your address and we'll post them to you. Are they on MySpace as well? No kind of current mood, jihadi. <laughs> anyway, I don't think McCain will let these bastards drag him down. He's still on the campaign trail. He's still trying to win over the swing voters. Yesterday he was outside uh, Pittsburgh and uh, one of Obama's supporters said that people in western Pennsylvania were rednecks. Sir, I am a redneck and I have never been to Western Pennsylvania. 
But McCain wasn't about to let anyone get away with it. You watch this. Take a look at this. I think you may have noticed that Senator Obama's supporters have been saying some pretty nasty things about Western Pennsylvania lately. And you know, I couldn't agree with them more. I couldn't disagree with you. I couldn't agree with you more than the fact that Western Pennsylvania is... got confused. Knock it off. At least he's trying to reach across the party lines. He's usually a fantastic speaker. He's charismatic. I love it when he gets fired up. He reminds me of someone. I always watch him and I think, who is it he reminds me of? And I was watching him a couple of weeks ago and thinking, who? take a look at this clip. It's, this is, you, you'll see. How about Sarah Palin last night, huh? <laughs> Now, here's the thing, here's the thing, in this election, Obama is so far ahead now, it seems the only way he can lose is if his supporters screw it up. But, aha, Obama supporters have a secret weakness. They are Democrats. <laughs> they are perfectly capable of screwing this up. I am not sure how Democrats remember how to win an election. They haven't won an election since 2000. They, didn't win they haven't won an election since 2000. <laughs> I'll wait. Anyway, uh, I think what will happen is they were with me and then no. You say anything bad about Obama, people are like, uh, excuse me, that is sacrilegious. <laughs> anyway, they're so far ahead in the polls, the Democrats, be, they, they won't be thinking about the election. This will happen. They'll be too, you know, November the 4th, they'll be too busy shopping at Whole Foods for the big Obama victory party. <laughs> I've got the brie, I got the free range mushrooms, I've got the tofu. <gasps> I forgot to vote! <laughs> Anyway, the Democrats uh, better watch out. That's all I'm saying. The Republicans are going to pull out all the stops. Do you see they've spent $150,000 on Sarah Palin's wardrobe? <laughs> I'm not so sure I like that. Now, some of you may know this. I've known Sarah Palin longer than most of you because she was on this show last year. And I liked her. How she was then. I liked her then. She was a little bit, you know, a little bit more kmart a little bit more... <laughs> a little more targety. <laughs> politician sexy but a little bit trashy a little bit. call me senator larry craig anyway they've... now they've dolled up sarah palin with hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of clothes from Saks fifth avenue <laughs> nothing says hockey mom like dropping six figures on bling <laughs> her, defense, her defense was though <laughs> The 150,000 doesn't go far when you're, uh, when you're a female political candidate. And that's true. Last year, Hillary Clinton spent twice as much on, uh, on suits at Men's Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. <clears throat> you're going to love the way you look. <laughs> Like a dude. <laughs> Come on, knock it off. I'm just talking. Will you just knock it off? All right, then. <laughs> the campaign, anyway, they're saying they're buying her all these clothes because they need her to make, <laughs> to make Sarah. It just makes me laugh. They, they, they want her to look hip and cool. And I'm thinking, if you're going to spend money trying to make somebody on your ticket look hip and cool, what about John? <laughs> what about John? He's got the 
same suits as me on, that poor bastard. Get, he would look great with some young, younger, newer clothes. He'd look awesome. Check out. Look, we've thought, look at this. Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> McCain and the hizzy <laughs> Biotch <laughs> We have to take a break for political reasons apparently uh, We'll be right back and when we come back something really dirty will happen maybe <laughs> I gotta tell you this. I, I, I'll tell you this if I tell you nothing else. I am ready for the election to be done. Are you not ready for the election to be done? I'm done. I like. You know, I think everybody knows where they want to go. Let's just get on with it now. Let's just get. On. I know there's seven percent of undecided voters. They're not really. They're just lonely people that want some attention. It's it. <laughs> Everybody knows what they're going to do. Let's get on. Let's get it done. You know. Hey, you know what disturbs me about it is the name calling. It's the name calling. You know, one side says the other side is anti-American or one side is not pro-American enough. Blah blah. Knock it off. <laughs> Both of these guys. In fact, all four of them. Well, well, no. Uh, Palin isn't a senator. She's a governor, right? But but all the, the, the all of the you know the candidates, right? But both of the the candidates, McCain and Obama, right? They're a hundred percent pro-America. Both of them. They are United States senators. You don't become a United States senator without being of a, a person of intelligence and gravitas. That can't be done. <laughs> respect for these offices, even if the guys who hold these offices don't have respect for these offices. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Senators, senators are dignified. They should be dignified. I'll show you a picture from last week's debate. You tell me which one of these guys lacks dignity. Look at that. All right. I <laughs> That was just stupid. Did we, did we do that? Did we do that? No, that actually happened. I wonder what he was thinking. Show me the picture again. Man, that's, that's weird. Kind of hot. <laughs> weird. All right, I can't be mucking around talking politics to you people. Um, apparently. So, uh, do we have time for an email, do we? Uh, yes, there's time for an email, Greg. Greg. That's why we do the polka dance with leader holes in our legs and rock was in, in our pants. pants. Hey! <laughs> da da dee dee dee, the old German email jingle. All right, uh, let's see. This is from John in New York, which is actually in New York. Um, he uh, says, Craig, I'm heading out to the MGM Grand in Las Vegas this weekend to watch you perform. You've wormed your way into my affection. <laughs> Will the audience in Las Vegas get free candy? <laughs> oh, no, no, it's Las Vegas. There's nothing free in Las Vegas. But you do get access to the all-you-can-eat buffet of me. <laughs> do you know, sometimes I just think I'm a shameless old hooker sitting here. <laughs> I'm moving to San Francisco. Uh, you hear about that? They have this proposition to make uh, prostitution legal in San Francisco. I don't know how I feel about that. I do, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with an immigrant having two jobs, is there? Come on. <laughs> this is uh, from uh, <laughs> this is from Carol in Indio in uh, California. Um, Indio is the uh, male town, India is the female town. <laughs> I know it's lame, it's my job. <laughs> Dear Craig, says Carl, don't you suppose the candidates should wash their hands after all the handshaking that they do? Oh, well, you got a point there, Carl. <laughs> Do 
See if you, like, I, I'm not suggesting for a second that anyone should do this, and I would not condone it in any way, but if you were at a rally and you did not support the candidate, you could put a booger in your hand and then shake hands with <laughs> And then they would be like waving and people would go, Booga! Booga! The polls would fluctuate. <laughs> Made myself laugh. Uh, do, 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 do. This is from Clarence in Royal Oak in Michigan. I think I've been there. Um, maybe. I've certainly been to Michigan and I think Royal Oak. Is Royal Oak near Detroit? Yeah, it's, it's almost part of Detroit, isn't it? <clears throat> I've been to Royal Oak, Michigan. Uh, it's part of Detroit. <laughs> Although they've got their own secessionist movement, I think, going on to become part of Alaska. Uh, uh, Clarence says, hey, Craig, where do you put sporks in the silverware drawer? With the forks or the spoons? A question that has plagued man since time immemorial. <laughs> I don't have sporks. Two hands. Opposable thumbs, usable fingers. I use both. <laughs> what is it? I don't get sporks. Do you get sporks? I don't like sporks. I know I'm sounding like Andy Rooney now. What's the deal with sporks? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. Look, take the time. Focus on your food. Use as many utensils as you need. I mean, you wouldn't want a surgeon using a spork, would you? <laughs> Bad analogy, but still. All right, we don't have time for any more. Uh, and actually, to be quite honest with you, they're all a bit dull. Um, oh, no, this is... Uh, yeah, that's dull, too. Uh, so we'll take a break. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll show some commercials. But these commercials we're about to show uh, are fabulous. They're the best commercials ever in the history of television. <laughs> so if you're watching this on the TiVo, don't do that doo -doo 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 <laughs> thing all the way through. Or do if you want. I'll be right here in three or five, how many? Well, in a few minutes. Or if you've got the TiVo, I'll be right back in like five seconds. <laughs> and Chris Matthews will be here. <laughs> That's it, I'm done. Good night, everybody. <laughs> they should have a dance-off between McCain and Obama. <laughs> oh, no, that's not fair either. Hey, look. <laughs> My next guest is the host on Hardball, which is on uh, MSNBC. <laughs> But it's actually good. Take a look at this. How many people in the Congress of the United States do you think are anti-American? You've already suspected Barack Obama. Is he alone or are there others? How many do you suspect well, of your I, colleagues I as being anti-American? What I would say, what I would say is that the news media should do a penetrating expose and take a look. I wish they would. I wish the American media would take a great look at the views of the people in Congress and find out are they pro-America or anti-America. I think people would be would love to see an expose like that. <laughs> Matthews, everybody. Yes, welcome, Chris. Welcome. How lovely to see you. Welcome to, uh, well, welcome, first of all, to broadcast television as opposed to the <laughs> MSNBCs. The, um, I've, I've been watching your show quite a lot. I seem to detect... Uh, a slight Obama bias yeah. in your coverage. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Well, that's, I mean... Well, I mean, I think, I mean, I've been around a long time, and I, and I he's the first candidate in about 100 years that's inspired me. Right. And I, I get excited when I watch him. I think, he's, I think it talks about the two biggest things I care about, which is this country being united, especially racially, since uh, black and white has been the 
San Andreas Fall of this country for 400 years. Not we are on the San Andreas Fall. We are right on now. it all yeah, the time. Yeah. We are on it. Right. No. And it's ready to break at any given moment. And yeah. I think he he heals it. I think he brings us together. And also rejoining the world. How about that? You 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 can't. You, no. Can I make you, that second point? No 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 no. He, he wants no, to no, bring us back the into the world. Like me. No no no. You you, you can't. See. <laughs> They're just clapping because they hope they'll get free candy. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not now. Now, tell me about this lady who was on the show, this uh, congresswoman who was yeah, talking about... Yeah, I think she's in trouble. But what happened? Well, I don't know, but we found her. And, you know, the old rule of warfare is if you're... You, the bayonet, if you put it in and it's squishy, you jiggle it around a little bit. And if you hit bone, you pull back. I, I got squish. And uh, I, I have to tell you, I... I was amazed because I said, I sensed she was going in this direction. And so I prompted her a little. I said, are you saying Barack Obama's anti-American? Yes. And she went all the way, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And then I said, well, who else is anti-American? Like, it was almost like precious bodily fluids here, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, you know, and Dr. Strangelove. And I said, well, how far can we go with this? And then she said, we should investigate the Congress for anti-American uh, point of view. And I, and she said it. Apparently, out in her district, she's in big trouble now. Well, I, I But they're out there. They're live ones out there. You just have to catch them once in a while. You know, well, yeah, I mean, we, 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 we got this. On the show. But doesn't it, doesn't it, I, I, I say this with the greatest deal of respect, doesn't it affect your credibility as covering the election if you're so clearly in the camp of one Well, because of I go after everybody. I mean, I caught a guy from Texas, uh, Kirk Watson, he, he was a, a state senator, and I said to him, name, I just had this sense, you know, when you know somebody doesn't know anything, mm. and I said, name one, accomplish, <laughs> name one accomplishment of Barack Obama. And he couldn't do it. And he was the one they put on our show, the national surrogate that night, to represent the whole campaign. I said, no, no, name one. And he go, blah, 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 blah. I said, no, no, name one. And of course, that's when I go in for the kill. And I go, and I just pushed him and pushed him. He finally says, I can't. And here's the guy saying, we got to have Barack Obama. And you, you know? can't, and you can't. Yeah, one time yeah. years ago, I made a friend. And well, I really like, I did this to Susan Sarandon one time. She's on. <laughs> And I, and I said to Susan Sarandon, let me get this straight, Susan Sarandon. Uh, you love Ralph Nader for president. And, yeah, and she said, yeah. And you're big against capital punishment, right? Where's Ralph Nader on capital punishment? <laughs> you know, it's not fair. It's just not fair. I, I don't, but, I don't know. But, where, you know, and you don't where is know, Ralph I, Nader? I, where is Ralph Nader, actually? Where is Ralph right, Nader? That was my point. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and then we had this kid on the other night who was saying, appeasement, appeasement, appeasement. This is appeasement. This is a classic. This is what happened in appeasement. I said, what was appeasement? He didn't know. Yeah. He didn't know what it was. It well, was, you know, I, was giving I, I, up I, half a Czechoslovakia in 38, and he had no idea. And afterwards, I called him and said, you know, we'll have you back on. Don't feel too bad. He says, I just couldn't think of the country. <laughs> you know, he just didn't know what he was talking about. And that's what happens. But this you, can make, you can make the great running for you, vice president? You can make great TV not knowing what you're talking about. I do that uh, no, here no, every no. night, sir. <laughs> you do not need to know what the hell you're talking about to make television. It's not no, necessary. No, I believe that you know what you're talking about. God, That's I, what no, I, I, believe. I have no idea. You what need I'm material. Talking. But listen, listen. Oh, please. Uh, I, I, on that very subject, I watched your show last night because I, was, I knew you were coming on, and uh, there was a lot of discussion about uh, Governor Palin's remarks yeah. about the vice presidency. Um, it's scary. She, uh, to your way of thinking, didn't understand the office no, in the way the that... No, it's the constitutional way of thinking. I know that it isn't a big read, the Constitution. You can take a look at it. If you're going to go for the job, check it out first. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you are running for vice president. There are, there are two jobs for the vice president. Succeed the president if it was a tragedy and preside formally over the Senate, but you have no rights in the Senate except to break a tie. It says in there, you are not a senator, you have no rights at all. She said, I'm gonna be in charge of the Senate and I'm gonna get in there and pass legislation. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get policies passed. You cannot do that under the Constitution, and she's never known this, and she's running for the job. Well, she's well, ready no, to, to serve be fair, in a job fair, she didn't know what it was. No, 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 to be fair, A, she will look fabulous doing it, and B, <laughs> and B, is, is, is the... <laughs> so that's right, yeah. she is attractive, there's nothing about the, uh, it. Well, you guys have spent all this money the on vice, her. The vice president is pro-tem president of the uh, of the. No, of the, the, senior, the senior senator of the majority party is pro-tem. Senator. I, is that right? Time president. Is that right? You don't have to check you, anybody else. You, check me. Well, <laughs> but I just, I, I just, I thought the vice president was You don't need a second time. opinion, okay? No, we, we should. The, 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 the senior, oh, right? the senior member. Oh. Look. <laughs> the, the, all, I, all I had to know was, all I had to know 
know was, uh, you know, the stuff that got me past the citizenship. But the test, president, basically. but the president. These are good questions. I think she should have to go through that test you went through. That's a hard test. That would be a great That's idea. That's a hard you know? test. Be not a great that idea. hard, really. <laughs> hard enough. It's not really. The test is like this. Like, you what know, is the vice president? The, no, the uh, test is. Do you love America? Yes. Are you an Al Qaeda? No. There's your cab license. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I went to one of those ceremonies. I spoke to them in Philadelphia about six months ago. It is so inspiring. Yeah, no, I, I went to it's one like about nine months ago. I was uh, a lot of It's like new... the UN. Everybody's there. No, no, it was 3,000 uh, new Mexican-Americans no, no, and no, one no, my crowd. new Scots My crowd was, was the many faces of Benetton. It was right, great. Right, right. No, my, was mine great. was uh, Cinco de Mayo. It is so... <laughs> In Southern California, of course it's going to be like that. That's all right. It was fun. And you pretended you were one of the officers running the thing. Right? No. <laughs> no, the, the, the minute I'm I said anything. I'm one of the ends. I'm one of the ends here. No. They heard me talk. They You're knew I wasn't right. from You're around. kidding me, right? It was a diverse group, wasn't it? No, not really. Right? No, no. It was, uh, most, most people were from uh, Mexico and Central America. Um, Did you feel different afterwards? Yeah, a little bit, actually. Yeah. Listen, the, to, to my mind, I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I think... That America is the only country in the world that exists because of an idea. Yes, exactly. Right? We're not an it's, ethnic it's group. A, it's a philosophical We're not a race. We're not an belief ethnic group. Yeah, to be idea. an American. It's a decision you know, look, to be I've an American. I'll mean, tell you something. Every group that's ever come to America has done better here than where they came from. Well, this group certainly yeah. has. <laughs> I... uh, because, because this is a country where you can come into this country. Remember this guy, Archie Leach, that came here from Britain? Archie Leach, he was a pole walk, uh, he was a he was a stilt walker on on, on uh, Coney Island. He made five bucks a day and then ten bucks on weekends. He wanted to be an American actor, so he goes to Missouri and he's right. working at St. Louis Theater, Regional Theater, and he's playing a guy named Carrie. His name's Archie Leach. He's playing a guy named Carrie, and he likes that name. That's, and then he picks up the name Grant. That sounds like an American oh, name. Yeah, and yeah. he becomes Carrie Grant, the most popular movie actor of all times. He said, I wanted to become this guy. Only in this country can you do that. But a guy named Ralph Schlipschitz, living up in uh, the Bronx. Nice, pretty name, huh? Living up in the Bronx is in a Schmeiser Schmata. It's a Yiddish term. He's selling these big wide ties in his 70s. He makes them from old materials. He becomes Ralph Lauren, who tells the wasp cell address. Yeah. You know? It's, it's only in this country can you do this. You can become not just who you want to be, but what you want to be. Well, I, I, and you see what you are? But, yeah, no, you're no, one of us now. No, no, no. I'm so great. You're us. And you're a what? Absolutely. You're not just a who. No, no, no. You are an iconic, it, an iconic being. It is. And I'm sitting next to you. It, and I want to broadcast television. And how come a, an immigrant just off the boat gets a broadcast job and I'm on cable? Just tell me. Just tell me. You just, you just shut line. You I'll jump tell you line. Why. You have no right to yeah, jump no. line. I will tell you why, because I am non-threatening. And that's what you need to be. I'm non-threatening. I'm innocent. I'm an innocent of abroad. I'm like Charlie Chaplin or a puppy. I'm just walking around. I don't know what's going on. I don't understand your big city ways. You get it. You get it, bro. No, I don't you know. You get it. But what I do think is... It's... You figured out this Sarah Palin pretty fast, I'll tell you. She was on the show last year. I know. You yeah. caught her early. Yeah, well, she actually, I tell you, it was kind of embarrassing. You liked her in the old clothes. Yeah, yeah, no, but listen, after, <laughs> after uh, she'd been on the show... Dress yeah. no, no, through... no, listen, she... So... <laughs> She had been on the show, right? She, there were people got in touch and said Sarah would like to actually come to the. Sh she had been, you know, it was a live via satellite tapey yeah. thing or whatever. Uh, Sarah would like to come and be a guest on the show, and I was like, Nah, Governor of Alaska, Nah. That sounds like you got this gig. I, and then, yeah, she likes promotes herself. Yeah, and then, and then I, when she becomes vice presidential candidate, and I called her up and said, Well, come on the show. She's like, Nah. You were part nah. of. You were part of. You were part of the build up. I was. You were I, part of the I, PR I, campaign. I, I hired the, somebody. I can you get her, Carl can you get her on Meet the Press? No, but I get her on Ferguson. You know, I get, <laughs> I get her on Late Late. Now, what else you can do? And after you, what was next? What was next after that? Uh, I think it was probably uh, the, what was that crank calling show on Comedy Central? <laughs> <laughs> You were part of the build-up. <laughs> Chris, we got to go. Gotta, um, uh, I have to go. You're staying. No, no. You, you can uh, leave. And <laughs> we will continue with the show. Chris Matthews, everybody. <laughs>
with a toddler who was cranky and had too much sugar, but I have never dealt with. <laughs> He's fun, though, isn't he? He's fun. Yeah, he's fun. <laughs> uh, my next guest is in the movie Role Models, which is in theatres uh, November the 7th. Take a look at this. Hi, it's a, it's a pretty interesting cape. Are you like a superhero or something? <laughs> I wish. No, this is, this is part of my battle attire for Lair. What the hell is Lair? It's, it's this fantasy world where anything is possible. One minute you could be sparring with an elf, and the next you could be, you could be battling against a troll who wants nothing more than just to steal your gold and leave you penniless. Sounds gay. No, no, there's, there's girls there. Girls can be gay. If by gay you mean the old English definition of fun, enjoyable, and carefree, then yes, it's extremely gay. I think they meant the other definition. <laughs> Please welcome Christopher Mintz Plus, everybody. <laughs> welcome, hey. welcome, Christopher. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, no, no, it's very nice. Hey, 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 now I did say it right, Christopher Mintz Plus. Plus, yes. Mintz Plus. Like floss with P. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't floss with P. I wasn't saying no, that. No, no, I know you weren't saying floss with Pete. What is the film about? So you're oh, playing a nerdy character. I'm playing a nerdy it. character, yeah, who likes a uh, lair, live action interactive role playing where you go to parks and uh, play with swords and try to battle for control of the realm scenario kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's, this may come as a surprise to you. I've never actually played any. No, of you played it. I've heard no, you played it. No, not at all. No, I was wild and anarchic in my youth. I was. Yeah, I played a lot of. You played, played a lot of players. That's what I heard. Well, well I've Dungeons and Dragons. I played, played the Dungeons and Dragons. Have you done oh, the Dungeons? No, 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 no. That's just awesome. That's so nerdy, though. That's that's kind of a cool nerdy thing to do. You Dungeons are calling me a nerd? Sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> How dare you? Oh, Chris I'm Matthews has just been here. I'm vulnerable. Oh, come on. You did well with him. He's a smart guy. You he's very. Your own. He's blustery. He is. He's blustery. You know, he's like a Force 10 Gale coming through wow. your house. Yeah, yeah. I don't want him coming through he, my house. You know what I think about Chris is that he looks like he's standing in a high wind even when he's indoors. Oh, that's kind of rude. No, no, it's just his that's hair kind of goes like that. And his know. face is just kind of... No, no, not like that. Oh. No, no, no. I don't think... I, do you think he's had work done? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> that's just not his. Would, would you ever do that in Hollywood because you're well, the I ever have work done? Yeah. Are you saying I need work done? Not at all. But I'm just thinking, you know, if you wanted, you know, boobies or something. <laughs> I got some nice boobies. All you right. can check them out when you need to. All right. I, I don't want to. Hey, uh, are you uh, are you old enough to vote now? I am 19. Oh right. So you're gonna you're gonna vote? It's my other? first uh, my first time I can vote. Yes. Yeah. I'm 46. Congratulations. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. So we're like the same age almost, like technically. No, no. <laughs> It's very interesting to be 46, and I hope you, you get there because it's... I hope I get there yeah, yeah, too. It's, uh, what happens is that everything feels the same inside, and then you look in the mirror, and it's your grandpa. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're much better looking than my grandpa, though. Don't worry. Well, not necessarily your grandpa. No, I'm just yeah. saying. I'm saying the fact that you look well for a 46-year-old. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to really? me. Really? The nicest thing tonight, oh i got to be honest. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's that's good. Now you played uh, McLovin in the uh, yes. in the the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's a terrific. Job. Very right. good job. All right. And uh, that you. was a nerdy car. Are you sick of the McLovin? Does everybody still call you McLovin? Um, I haven't gone to one since you just said that. So you're kind of a jerk right now. Oh come on! I'm just saying, you're the first person all day. I'm a jerk who looks like your grandpa. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not, you know, the reason I chose this role was to work with the director, David Wayne, huge fan of him. I didn't choose the role because it was a nerd. I right. didn't read the script and go, holy I gotta be a nerd again. Let me do this script. Do not cuss on this show. <laughs> I heard you say the twice. It's my show. That's right. That's right. That's right. That is a, that is a great point. That is a solid point you made. <laughs> When I get my own show, I can swear. No, no, you, I'm sure you do. Don't you, uh, you and your young friends all get together and swear? We, that's, oh, we, we get together to swear. Do, and we don't go to movies. We go, let's hang out and swear. Swear and, yeah. and, and uh, smoke herbal cigarettes, it's I would imagine. Herbal cigarettes? Yeah, you know what I mean. Herb? You know what I'm talking about. I know what he's talking about. You know about. what I'm talking about. We smoke the herbal uh -huh. cigarettes. Herbal Bull cigarettes. Yeah. 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 Play Dark Side of the Moon and oh, watch and uh, Wizard of Oz yeah, and yeah. Triplets of Belleville and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah. work. No. no, really, it doesn't. Sync no, up. it doesn't work. I tried it. They you know. sell the DVD where it's already synced up to the movie. 
They do? Yeah. And if it doesn't work, that's just a waste. I would to be young again. Oh. <laughs> really? Yeah, then if, it's, if it doesn't sink, then that's just a waste of cash if you're buying that. I didn't buy it. I didn't no, waste my cash. Kind of yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Now, what are you doing with all this money? Have you got a big swanky pad in Hollywood? Um, you, uh, I'm buying suits like this. It's very nice this suits. Is, I bought this good. yesterday for your show. Yeah, it's lovely. Thank you so much for, you. for doing that. It's very nice to, um, with a check and everything, and you got your mm -hmm. shoes there. I am. Um, I, I was going to ask you, uh, where, where, where do you live? Um, I grew up uh, like five minutes from Calabasas, if you know where that is, 101 North. You still live there? Yeah. Really? Live with my parents. You live with your parents? Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? I'm 19. You lived with your parents when you were 19. No? <laughs> Am I not? All right, then. Can you tell my parents to, to just kick me out and move out? Can you please just say it to the TV because that they'll... Guarantee they're no, gonna watch no, no, us. No, 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 they already know. <laughs> Christopher, they are being nice to you because they love you. But That's it's true. time, it's time. Trust me, to... I want to move out, Craig. Oh, you do? Yeah, I want to get out of there. My mom won't let me. I'm her baby. She needs her baby at home. <laughs> I think in all the years I've been doing this show, this is the first time a guest has ever said, my mom won't let me. My mom won't let me. She doesn't my think mom. I'm responsible enough. Are you living on your own? You still living no, in no, no. I got, I got a girl living in my house. Oh my goodness! Good work. Good work. One girl, two girls. No, just one. Okay. All right. <laughs> Although you raise an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's interesting. So you, you, you're still with your parents. Now, I am. Do, you, do have you got a separate area of the house for yourself? Maybe the basement. Um, I mean, I have my bedroom, and I have the basement's kind of where I, I, I have my drum set in there. I play drums in the basement, I so I guess that's my zone. Drums. Really? Yes. We're drum so, Can't you feel the beat in the hit? Yeah, we're both excellent drummers, I see. <laughs> no, in fact, when I was 17 or maybe 16, okay. I left home to tour uh, Britain with a, with a rock and roll band. Wow, then, you're, then I wasn't your band must have been, they must have been good for your touring. What, the band? Yeah. No, no they weren't good. No, oh, no. God. Yeah. Man, and then I got no, a tour It's around. like running away to join the circus. You right. Know, yeah. What kind of band? Uh, punk rock music, basically. You played punk rock? Yeah. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Why not? All right, maybe, okay, maybe when you were 16. I yeah, buy it when you were 16. 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I did it all, son. So you're doing like fast beats, heavy beats. No, I couldn't do it now. <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm only good for power ballads. Ah, uh, no. okay. <laughs> you don't have fun anymore in the drum set? Oh, I have fun. I remember I told you there was a girl in my Oh, it's funny. Yeah. You gotta get on that. Maybe if you start playing the drums, you get two girls. I don't want two girls. You've got to grow up with this ah, thing. That's I mean, I of course getting, I do, I'm but 19. you can't say that to them. <laughs> Did that come out of my mouth? It yeah, did, yeah. Anyway, it's been lovely talking to you, Christopher. Oh, so great uh, to be good here. luck with the film, and do come back and see us anytime. I would love to, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, anytime you would like. Awesome, um, thank maybe you. Uh, tomorrow. I'm going to be in London. Uh, you're going to be in London? I'm going to be in London. I'm leaving right after this. Wow. Yeah. What are you going to do there? Filming a movie. <laughs> Gotta work. Gotta work, Craig. Gotta be here to promote something next, right? Yeah, got your rent to pay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher Lynch, Lynch, everybody. We'll be right back. What I learned on the show tonight is that I think Chris Matthews has to use his inside voice when he's on the television. <laughs> and Christopher Mintz Plus is a lovely young man. Isn't what a charming young man with a suit on and sneakers. <laughs> And I think that's all I learned. Um, yeah, that would be it. <laughs> oh, Al Qaeda has a website. <laughs> I mean, come on, what? <laughs> Good night, everybody.